Trivia question for the Sunday Surprise Draft. How about this? Tua Tonga-Vailoa, the first rookie quarterback to beat Bill Belichick and the Patriots since who, Chris? I heard this yesterday. A Geno Smith of the Jets. Yeah. Da, 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 da. Boom. I, I, roll, I, I heard baby. somebody say it on, on a highlight show or somewhere during a game yesterday. I might have heard it at the end of that football game. And then, of course, our producer – there's a Jets fan, so of course he knows that, and that's what he asks. I mean, just too too predictable, too too predictable. I mean, could have been Mark Sanchez. Could have been Mark Sanchez. Uh, you're right. It could have been. You're right. Um, how do I not start there? You know, with a Jets fan asking a question that centers around the Jets. How could we not start with the Sunday surprise being the winless Jets go to L.A. to play the Los Angeles Rams, who? I don't know. I mean, we've at least had the conversation a few times over the last five, six weeks where we go, I don't know. The Rams, the best team in the NFC. I don't know. I mean, the NFC is hard to figure out, but either way, you know, that was the Sunday shocker for me. Sam Darnold played good football. Jets ran the ball a little bit. Their defense really was the story of the day. They never let McVay and golf really get in a rhythm uh, in any way. You know, Quinn and Williams, before he got hurt, him and Nathan Shepard up front, the defensive tackles, they were whooping butt and slowing down that Rams running game. So that, that to me, was amazing. You know, the fact that the, the Jets, you know, really you could sit there and go, they won all, almost all three phases of the game. They might have won all three phases of the game and pulled off an upset against a playoff caliber team is a uh, shocker. Yeah, 17-point underdogs and won the game straight up. And, you and I both had Rams as our best bets. We were 0-2-1 combined in best bets this week. And we got pushes on the two games, on the one game that we disagreed on. We had two that were the same that we both lost. We had different ones for our third one, and we got pushes independently. You had Seattle giving five to Washington, oh. push. I had Kansas City giving three to the Saints, push. So uh, not a great week for us, but even worse for the Rams, at least at least we can move on. The Rams have to live with this one for a little bit. First one for me to go back to the top story of the day. The fact that Breeze played when he clearly wasn't ready to play. How is that not a surprise? I wouldn't have expected him back on the field until he was 100% or close to it. Just last Monday night on ESPN at halftime of the game. Shefty's in. He's not going. They're not going to put him back on the field until he's 100 percent or close to it. Well, he's not close to 100 percent, and I'm amazed that somehow, some way, there was a misfire in an otherwise buttoned up from top to bottom Saints organization, which always finds a way to make the right decision, do the right thing, move in the right direction. To let Drew Brees play yesterday when he should not have been playing was a stunner to me, just a half click below the fact that the Jets found a way to win a game. No, uh, I mean, I'm with you. The, just, just the way Breeze looked all together was, you know, surprising for Sunday. It really was. It was shaky, like we talked about to start the show. He never looked comfortable in the pocket or what he was seeing down the field. Uh, it was really off yesterday. There's no doubt. Um, I'm surprised, too, that it looked that way or that it was that far away from being 100%. Um, but either way, yeah, it cost them yesterday. It did. That game, they had a chance to Question. win it if the offense was a little better. But Do you think Peyton considered getting him out of there? I, 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 in that moment, I don't think you can. No, I don't think so I don't either. think you can do it. Even if you think about it, I don't think you can do it. No, I think it, that opens up more more can of worms than they want to deal with. And then you got to talk about that. And then, oh, who's going to start this week? Is it going to be Taysom Hill or Drew Brees? You know, again, in a year where not having the number one seed is, is, is you know, not a huge deal because no crowd and all of that. Um, hey, we're going to have to – looking like we're going to have to see Drew Brees on the road most likely. In Lambeau. In Lambeau. In Lambeau. Could be a good chance, right, which, you know, the way he threw the ball yesterday and everything like that, that scares you when you think about that. And you go, well, that was a perfect environment. He goes to Lambeau, it's not going to be perfect. The ball is going to be slick and frozen and there's going to be wind. And what's it going to look like if he throws some of those passes we saw yesterday, you know, in late January? So, uh Hey, hopefully they can get him in a groove here these last two weeks to where he can get to the playoffs and, you know, kind of be hitting on, on all systems go. Um, I'm going to go – this is more of a big picture thing, but we haven't hit on this game. And I just – I mean, the the Titans, their offense, just, it's not even just a surprise for yesterday. It's a surprise for the whole year. 
Because what, the Titans are one of those things, Mike, and I know I said this to you like off air, that we hadn't hit the game. And it's just one of those, you look at the stats sometimes. Hey, let me see where this off, you know, and you go, whoa, wait, the Titans are the number two offense in football. I just, I don't know if a lot of people really realize that and how explosive they are on that side of the football and what they did yesterday to the Lions. You know, they're just, their ability to make big plays in the run game and pass game, it's up there with anybody. It might not be as cool and as fun and highlighty and, you know, fantasy football driven maybe as the Kansas City Chiefs and all that, but it's every bit as effective as the Kansas City Chiefs in a lot of ways. I mean, they can do it whatever way they want. It's, yeah, we can run the ball and break off big plays, but when we got to drop back and throw the ball and make big plays there, they're one of the best there is at that as well. It's just uh, remarkable what they've done. And that's a guy like Arthur Smith, the offensive coordinator for the Titans. You don't hear his name a whole lot. He probably needs to be, you know, talked about in that head coach, top offensive coordinator conversation a little bit more. Put a pin in that comment because that is one of my centerpiece grievances coming up on the actual day of Festivus, the okay. fake holiday created by Frank Costanza, Wednesday, December 23. But uh, two quick points about that great performance we saw yesterday from the Titans. The final score, 46-25. That was the first time there's ever been a score of 46 to 25 in 101 years of NFL football, which is amazing. That's a scoregami as they call it online. And there were two this weekend, 48, 19, the bills win over the Broncos. Another one. We got two of them in one week. Uh, 1,056 unique scores now of NFL games in 101 seasons. All right. Next one for me, Salvan Ahmed, the dolphins running back who had played in three games before uh, Sunday and was pressed into service because Miles Gaskin was injured. Ahmed's grandmother's in the hospital. He told her he'd get 100 yards, and he did. He got 122 on 23 carries and a touchdown that he is taking the ball to her. He told me she's doing better, uh, which is which is uh, obviously good news, but a uh, neat little story and a surprise, a definite surprise. I doubt that he was on many fantasy lineups in yesterday's fantasy playoffs Chris no definitely not but you know that that it just it speaks to the bigger picture of what the Dolphins are doing down there you know how well they've built their football team the fact that they can find a free agent talent like that you know and the, and the fact that if they can play defense and the way they've been playing and run the ball just even somewhat close to the way they ran the ball yesterday you know that bodes well for them being a pain in the butt in the playoffs if they can get in because two is not at the point right yet where he's going to carry the team and drop back pass and throw lasers all over the field. No, they're still managing him. He's making some plays here and there, but that's the way that's the fact of where they are right now. So they need that run game to help some of those boots and play actions that they want to do with Tua and make them more effective. And that could be an effective formula as far as uh, playoffs are concerned. All right. My next one. I mean, I don't know. I'm not shocked, but I'm still shocked. Okay. The, the Falcons, the, the, the Brady comeback, the ownership of Brady over the Atlanta Falcons, th th that still was amazing. I just, you know, again, we know the Falcons aren't good, but up 17 to nothing against, hey, it's Tom Brady, his first year in Tampa. Man, I don't know. And the way Atlanta was looking, I just thought, I don't, I don't know if this is going to be one of those days Brady can bring them back. That was amazing. The, the, the way in which he did it, how quickly they made plays to bring them back, and just how good Brady looked doing it, that was a, a Sunday surprise for me. They start putting full games together, and they are going to the Super Bowl, and it's going to be Brady and, the, and, and Mahomes together in Tampa for Super Bowl 55. Last one for me, um, Tony Pollard and the Cowboys. Mm. Uh, Pollard had 130 plus yards from scrimmage and the Cowboys get the win on the day when everyone else in the division loses. And I had made the joke Saturday night when the Rose Bowl announced that the game will be played at AT&T Stadium and it may not even be called the Rose Bowl. And I said, hey, they're finally going to have a meaningful playoff game in Dallas this year. But they're, they could still win that division. They're not dead yet. Wouldn't it be amazing if the Cowboys find a way to get hot? I'm stunned that they beat the 49ers, as are you. That was another one of our best bets that blew up in our faces. And uh, good for the Cowboys. Thanks, Nick Mullins. Pollard. Thanks, and, Nick and, Mullins. Yeah, th yeah, thanks, Stefan Georgevich. He's very uh, good when again. the game has got no competitive meaning. But when the game gets real again, man, he's a disaster.
Well, he, he got he finally got yanked yesterday for C.J. Beathard. We'll see what they do next week against the Arizona Cardinals. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.